Millennium Exile, Ty Hansen. To all who have supported the Millennium Exile project over the years, I promise that I'd never give up. To my loving wife, thank you for always being there and for loving me through all my nonsense. To those who didn't believe, who in the hell do you think I am? This book is for all the dreamers of the world. Aim high, don't be afraid of failure, and most importantly, stay true to yourself. Don't aim to break the glass ceiling. Aim to shatter it. Machona de la Weo. Welcome to Reiner, a planet that has flourished amidst three great nations, the Republic of Ko, East Londell, and the Kingdom of Maine. From the icy heights of the shattered peninsula to the green pastures of Fleece, Ko is filled with impossibly beautiful landscapes, mythical creatures, and unique plant life. Yet, despite its beautiful veneer, Ko has a dark and tumultuous history that has long since been lost to the passages of time. Now, on the continents of Felbara and Xerxes, another story unfolds, one that will decide the fate of all who live on Reiner. Mission 1. Grave. Chapter 1. The ground shook violently, and rocks shattered laying waste to entire mountains and landscapes as two unknown figures of tremendous power fought one another. One was a man, clad heavily in a mysterious black armor, while the other appeared far more demonic. A pair of giant wings stretched from his back, razor-sharp horns protruded from above his elven ears, and two whip-like tails hung from beneath his long blue-green hair. The armored warrior pushed back his devilish foe in a show of unparalleled strength. However, just before he can land the finishing blow, thousands of tortured screams filled the man's head, pleading for mercy. He dropped to one knee, disoriented and clutching at his face. His mysterious armor began to stir, resonating with his distress. It swirled across his body and began to bubble. The demon slowly backed away as a dark, menacing energy filled the atmosphere. Suddenly, several black tendrils sprouted from the armor and burrowed deep into the ground, lifting the warrior high into the air as if he were being sacrificed. He screamed as the armor began to swell, and a large crack snapped across his helmet, revealing a single green eye, open wide in confusion and panic. Vincent! 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 A young man woke suddenly, his golden eyes shooting open. Sitting up quickly, his tattered baseball cap fell from his face. He had an athletic build and wore a black singlet, long pants, and dirty sneakers. As he put his hat back on to manage his long, unkept purple hair, the young man looked up to see four disheveled children standing over him, with panicked looks all over their grimy faces. <sighs> what the hell? Vincent growled. How many times do I have to tell you kids not to wake me like that? Beads of sweat ran down his face as he caught his breath, recovering from the strange dream. Vincent had these nightmares regularly, an assortment of visions showing himself in the body of another young warrior amidst a time of war and chaos. Three of the children recoiled from the scolding, but the fourth stood his ground, determined. The vipers are causing trouble again! They're barging into everyone's houses and stealing food! Uh, that's so... Vincent questioned lightly, scratching his head. Here, I was thinking you kids were bothering me about some crap like, Oh, Vincent, jump really high with us on your back! Or, Can you get my ball down from that high roof? He stood up in the shady black alley where he had been sleeping and dusted himself off. But, a good old fight with the vipers is just what I needed to cure some of my boredom. He smiled broadly. Actually... I haven't heard from them for a while, but I guess that lot will never learn. This time, they've got more guys with them, and I'm pretty sure it's in case you show up, the determined child said with urgency. Y yeah it's a huge group, way bigger than normal, interjected another. Vincent chuckled at this thought, amused that the vipers would try and prepare for him. <laughs> That's okay, just gives me more of a workout is all. <sighs> He stretched his limbs in preparation. One thing I need to know, though, Vincent asked with a serious gleam in his eyes. Has anyone been hurt yet? I don't know everything, 
the determined child answered quickly. But they've roughed up a bunch of people. Well, for what it's worth, you did a good job finding me. Although, it looks like you were followed. Vincent pointed to the end of the alleyway behind the children, where a hooded stranger loomed in the shadows. As the man approached, flicking a knife between his fingers, Vincent stepped forward unfazed. He held his right shoulder with his left hand while winding his right arm around to stretch his muscles. Cracking his neck sharply from side to side, he noticed the tattoo of a snake on the intruder's forearm, the telltale mark of the vipers. Despite his nonchalant attitude in such a dangerous situation, Vincent was distracted by a painful and almost crippling headache that often set in whenever he had these dreams. The stranger grinned evilly and began to utter something. But before a full letter sound could leave his lips, a heavy thwack echoed throughout the alleyway. The aggressor's head bounced off the wall to his right, and his unconscious body fell to the floor. Vincent stepped over the man's body, barely breaking stride, and threw the knife into a dumpster on his way past. Stay here until I get back, Vincent instructed. You'll be safe. D stay here? One of the timid children stammered. What if this guy wakes up? What do you expect us to do? Vincent chuckled and looked over his shoulder, the shadow of the brim of his hat hiding all but an amused smirk. Don't worry, he's not waking up for at least a few hours. <laughs> I'll be back before the sun goes down, he said before walking down the alleyway and out of sight. One of the children looked up to the sky. But the sun has already started to set. It'll be night soon. This is your first time meeting him because you're younger than us, the determined child said with his hands on his hips. But Vincent's awesome. If he says we're safe here, then we are. He looked down and playfully pushed the unconscious viper's cheek around with the toe of his ragged shoe. Nearby, fearful residents retreated to the corners of their homes, huddled together, as members of the viper gang rummaged through what little belongings they had. Around 40 in number, they patrolled the ghettos conducting home invasions in groups of six. Having benefited from their numerous crimes, these men ate well. As a result, they had healthier physiques than the other desperate residents. In the open main street, several women and children had been restrained and forced to their knees as members of the Vipers threatened them with bats, pipes, and assorted makeshift weapons. A heavily scarred man, wearing a sleeveless black jacket and brandishing a large sword, flicked a discarded cigarette into the air. Following its arc, he spotted Vincent standing on the rooftop above. What have you done this time, Bado? Vincent questioned angrily. Vincent had known Bado for as long as he could remember. He used to look up to Bado when they were both kids. However, despite Vincent's best intentions, Bado always rejected him, just as everyone did. Bado knew that Vincent would come to save the people who hated him. Their eyes widened in fear wherever he went. But even though they refused to accept him, Vincent continued to help them all the same. He could never turn his back on someone in need. All Vincent ever wanted was to help. To be a hero like his late father. While it pained him, Vincent was used to being hated. <laughs> Knew you'd be along eventually, Mr. Hero, Bodeau said with scorn. He stretched his arms outward showing off his large, muscular physique and looking pleased with himself. You see, this time, I assured my victory. Vincent raised an eyebrow, distracted by his headache and confused by Badeau's ridiculous claim. Oh, look at you with your little plans, he mocked. Despite Vincent's blasé attitude, Badeau's smile grew. You've been screwing with us for years now. Hell, I can't even count how many times these scars are from you. <laughs> Bado barked as he held open his jacket to reveal his bare chest. But it got me thinking. If you've been getting in my way, you've probably been pissing off the other gangs too. Am I right? Eh, probably. Vincent nodded, trying to put together Bado's train of thought. Mm -hmm. So, me and the boys reached out to the other delinquent groups. The Four Horsemen, Paradise of Despair, and the Red Dragon. All of us are rivals from all over this shit heap. 
But you know what? Despite all our differences, the one thing we can agree on is you. You've been interfering with our business, Vinny. And it's time we put you in the dirt once and for all. Vincent sucked his teeth. While he was usually confident in his abilities, the sheer number of hostages concerned him. He was disgusted that innocent people were being used as human shields, but he refused to give Bado the satisfaction of seeing how vulnerable it made him feel. You're telling me that with all that manpower, you still need to take women and children hostage? <laughs> Vincent crossed his arms. That lack of confidence makes you look weak. Bado snapped his fingers, and a nearby thug grabbed one of the children, dragging him up by the hair and holding a jagged knife to his throat. Then, in a moment that appeared to make time stand still, the man with the blade was kicked into the wall behind him, Vincent's foot firmly planted in his chest. His golden eyes were wild with anger and fixed on Bado as he descended. The child fell to the ground, unhurt, and scrambled away, crying in fear. The other hostages were quickly pulled backward, weapons held against their flesh. Vincent surveyed his surroundings. The hostages were too far from one another. There was no way that he could beat a group of this size without endangering innocent lives. He slowly rose to his feet, holding up his arms in surrender. Yet, despite this seemingly hopeless situation, Vincent seemed almost amused. Okay, you got me, he exclaimed. You really thought this one through, didn't you, doughy boy? Bodeau stepped forward, dragging his sword along the concrete until he was almost nose to nose with Vincent. And yet... You still couldn't help yourself, he sneered. You just had to dive in and attack the moment you got angry, didn't you? Huh? You know, that temper of yours is what makes you predictable. Vincent raised his head slightly. And yet, you've never beaten me. Funny how being predictable means nothing if you're strong. Bodo laughed loudly. <laughs> he stepped back into the street, raising his sword and twirling on the spot. Now, what do you think all this is for? He gestured to the scene before Vincent. Wow, it took you this long to finally come up with a plan to catch me? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure whether to be proud or just feel sorry for you. Vincent was getting bored. He knew Bodeau was trying to get a rise out of him. He'd been in worse scrapes than this, and his strength had never failed him. So why would this time be any different? Bodeau's smile faded to a scowl as he snapped his fingers again. Take him. Several thugs swarmed over to restrain Vincent. However, regardless of their numbers, they couldn't move him an inch. Whoa, whoa, whoa okay, let's get this straight. I come with you, and all of this stops right now? Vincent asked gesturing towards the hostages and ransacked buildings. A large man hung from his wrist while Vincent effortlessly swung him about. <laughs> Bodeau turned his back to Vincent and placed his hands on his hips, emphasizing dominance. <laughs> you really ain't in a position to make demands here. So what are you going to do if we keep going? Hmm? Vincent shrugged. Oh, if you can't guarantee everyone's safety and return their belongings? I might as well take you all out right now, Vincent replied confidently. Though he didn't know any of the hostages too well, he often protected everyone who lived in the ghettos from these large violent gangs. Vincent could beat them in the blink of an eye if he wanted, but this would require more force than he was comfortable exerting without endangering lives. Bodeau turned back. You think we need any of the shit these filthy rats have? He closed the distance between them and whispered in Vincent's ear. We raided another district three days ago. Mm -hmm. While you were busy rebuilding that house that burned down last week. Vincent's eyes widened, realizing that the group had been distracting him and feeding off his absence elsewhere. <laughs> That's right, Bado gloated. We're the ones who started that fire. We knew that the mighty hero of the Ryuga ghetto would come and lend a hand. Haven't you wondered why you hadn't seen us lately? Hmm? What? Do you think that the big bad Vincent Klein had scared us off? 
<clears throat> We've been staging these little accidents for weeks now. When you go to help, we take advantage someplace else. Our food supplies are so full these days that I might just throw some out. Just for the hell of it. Badeau's toothy grin widened. <laughs> we got what we wanted from this little excursion. So move your ass! Vincent went quiet. His blood was boiling, and his muscles tightened with rage. He turned his gaze to the hostages briefly, the fear in their eyes overwhelming. Deep down, Vincent knew they were more afraid of him than they were of the gangs. He closed his eyes and swallowed the desire to skim Badeau down the street like a stone across a pond. Now appearing docile enough, the group escorted Vincent from the street. This would not go unpunished. They would pay for making a fool out of him. Let's go! Badeau yelled. Gang members began to spill out of the surrounding houses, following closely behind. The sound of metal connecting with bone echoed throughout an abandoned warehouse in the old industrial district. The heavy noise bouncing off the thin metal walls and high ceilings was almost drowned out by the laughter of the large, unruly group of gangsters. Cold chains were secured tightly around Vincent's wrists and ankles, restricting his movements and suspending him from the support beams in the rusted metal ceiling. His feet were bound and bolted to the heavily stained concrete floor. The faint smell of the dried blood from previous hostages caused him more anguish than his confinement. Holding a damaged metal bat, one man swung ruthlessly at Vincent's skull and chest. Yet, despite his best efforts, it only bent the weapon further. That's it! My turn! Another demanded. So you're saying that if I stick this piece of shit with a blade, it won't do a thing? He looked at Badeau for confirmation. Uh, knock yourself out, Badeau replied wearily. The Vipers have had more run-ins with this freak than all the other gangs combined. So, we understand not many of you had the chance to put his body to the test. The man stepped forward, thrusting the knife into Vincent's abdomen. He began to tremble as he applied more and more pressure. However, to the man's disappointment, he was forced to withdraw the knife having no more effect than a finger pressing against skin. He tried again, this time applying all his strength, but the blade snapped off at the handle. Breathing heavily from his wasted effort, the man looked furiously up at Vincent. You done already? Vincent asked with a self-righteous look on his face. He was used to this. The vipers had tried to hurt him many times before, and this time was no different. Their weapons had no effect. He could barely feel anything but a light itch. The man reached for another weapon. Come on, oh, give me something. That's enough. Badeau shoved the man aside. Anymore, it's just a waste of time and good weapons. Uh, <sighs> you want to tell me why I'm here? Vincent yawned. Earlier, oh, oh God. You said you'd put me in the dirt once and for all. How exactly are you going to do that? <laughs> I was waiting for that cocky attitude to come out before the main show. Badeau smiled. You think just because you're super strong that your body's invincible? Hmm? Invincible? You haven't drawn a single drop of blood yet. I, who knows? Maybe it'll bore me to death. Badeau walked into the crowd and was handed an object wrapped in cloth. He unveiled a handgun and pointed it at Vincent's head. Where did, where did you get a gun? He hadn't known Badeau to be a murderer, but Vincent was horrified that he had managed to get his hands on a firearm. This was dangerous. Not for him, but for everyone who lived in the ghetto. She's a beauty, ain't she? Mm. Bodo stroked the barrel of the gun, drinking in Vincent's horror. And that's not even the best part. He stretched his arms out, and several gang members pulled back a cloth at the back of the warehouse, revealing a massive pile of firearms of all shapes and sizes. Turns out, our new unified group is capable of some pretty amazing things. <laughs> Uh, by sharing our information and resources, 
we've been able to acquire these through the underbelly of the metropolis. We now have a deal to supply firearms in the ghettos. However, Vincent had stopped listening. Bodeau's words had faded out as he stared at the gun pointed at his face. His mind wandered back to when he was a child. Venturing into the Ryuga metropolis under the cover of darkness, a young Vincent ran playfully alongside two other children, a boy around his age and a young girl slightly older. The girl's long, fiery red hair billowed behind her as she ran. She laughed playfully, looking back at Vincent with her emerald eyes. Vincent blushed, admiring her beauty. The boy had spiky, short, light gray hair, and a surprisingly muscular physique for a child his age. They ran about the large city without a care in the world, regardless of what the metropolitan residents thought of them. The mischievous trio hid in dark alleys before sprinting into local convenience stores and stealing all their little arms could carry. One night, Vincent was on lookout duty, while the other young boy ran from an incapacitated resident with a fistful of cash. Suddenly, a police officer sprang into action, catching the boy and beating him ruthlessly before pulling out a gun. He cocked back the hammer and hesitated for what felt like an eternity. Bang! Bedell had fired a warning shot into the air. The sound reverberated through the desolate shed. Wakey, wakey! <laughs> he crowed with a wicked grin. I'm sorry. Do you have somewhere else to be? Hmm? Doesn't matter, because you can dream all you want in just a second. Bodo held the barrel up to Vincent's forehead as he began to tremble. What is this sensation? This feeling? He wondered. Doubt, confusion, anger, despair. They were all flooding through his mind. He was paralyzed not because of the chains restricting him. It was the sudden onslaught of raw, unbridled emotion surging throughout his body. Is this fear? Vincent thought, as the barrel of the handgun slid across his forehead and pressed into his temple. Sweet dreams, Mr. Hero, Bado exclaimed as he pulled the trigger.